I finally made it. I am finally ingrained into the history of all souls and Elden Ring PvP. I did it. I did it, Mama. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm your little man. Uh, hey, hey, hi. What's going on? I don't know how to start YouTube videos, man. Um, I have uh been goofing off and trying to uh, like when Elden Ring first came out. Like I remember saying during one of my streams, I was like, eventually somebody is going to hit instead of a roll backstab, somebody's going to hit a jump backstab. Um. And then I never saw it. I never saw... I mean, I, I saw people do, like, accidental jump backstabs. Um, that are... Like, you do a jumping R1, and you just happen to land at your opponent's back. And when you land on your opponent's back, you not only get the jumping R1 light attack, whatever. You not only get the jumping light attack, but you also get, like, a backstab out of it. Um, it is a very weird thing. Uh, it's it's something that I think you could learn how to do, but I don't think anybody has learned how to do it yet. So anyway, uh, fast forward a couple months later, and I saw Sir Gray Fox jump over um, a Bloodhound Fang, and I was like, "Oh, that's crazy! Uh, I want to try that." And then it occurred to me that like okay you could probably jump over the bloodhound fang second attack and get the backstab uh if you if you figured out how to jump right correctly if you figured out how to jump correct uh and so that became my mission all right so we're going to jump over the bloodhound fang and then we're going to get the backstab all right and in keeping with the, the 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 tradition of dark souls where uh you know some dumb PvP tech gets named after food. Uh, I have I have decided to call this the, the the hibachi backstab. This is a hibachi backstab. When you jump over somebody and backstab them. And you might be saying to yourself, why is all stuff named after food? And the answer to that question is we don't really know. Um, Mr. I Won't Forget explained the there it is, by the way. Mr. I Won't Forget explained the, um, the origin of the ravioli step, which is just a reverse back step to me. Uh, Mr. I Won't Forget said that, you know, people referred to Dark Souls 1's netcode as uh, spaghetti netcode, which is a thing. I've heard that before. Um, and so if you have spaghetti netcode and you have a back step that makes you uh, have infinite poise, which is what it did in Dark Souls 1, uh, it was, you know, a ravioli, right? Spaghetti netcode, ravioli steps, etc. And so, okay, so that's where that one came from. And then the burrito uh, came from Peeve. After he parried someone, he hit them before taking the repost, and so we call that a burrito. And so, and now, if uh, if your opponent does, an, if you jump over your opponent and get a backstab, that's a hibachi. That's a hibachi backstab <laughs> because of that stupid hibachi story that I made a video about. <laughs> that's anyway. Yeah, I, 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 I have, I have left my mark, my legacy. <laughs> His name in this dumb backstab. Uh, I, I'm trying to find. I spent like all week doing invasions, and I was looking for other attacks that I could jump over. Um, and there are a few. The problem is like finding the time where you can do it getting the input right and then getting the backstab it's a lot this is not this is not um like a reasonable thing to do right 
Like, with the burrito, you know, it's worth it. Because you get extra damage out of it. You know, you're not getting any extra damage out of this. In fact, it would probably be better to just, like, outspace the Bloodhound Fang and then hit them with your own Ash of War. Whatever it is. You know, or just parry it. You can just parry it. It's so easy to parry. But, uh, yeah. That's not going to stop me from looking for ways to do it. There's a ton of attacks. There's a ton of weapons. There's a ton of things that I think all could be jumped over and backstabbed. Um, and it's just a matter of me finding the, the right position and time and uh, getting the, the button press. Getting the actual, you know, getting the actual um, execution down, right? Even then, <laughs> I don't think this will ever be worth it. But that's that's perfect. That's just absolutely perfect. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's the. You, if you jump over somebody and backstab them, that's a hibachi backstab. This invasion that you're watching doesn't have that. There's no there's no hibachi backstab in this video. But I made a video uh, talking about Dragon Claw into Blood Flame Talon uh, last week, and. I forgot to include this invasion in the video, which is a shame because this invasion was awesome. And I was like, there's no way I'm letting this invasion go to waste, so you're getting it in this video. In fact, this entire video is just going to be a big hodgepodge of weird random stuff. So, uh, you know, enjoy that. It, there was the hibachi thing at the start of the video, and now we're just doing random stuff. Uh, but this invasion was great. Um, level 60 at Stormvale is a little odd, I'm not sure what's going on here. But, uh, you know, if, if you went to, if you went to Raya Lucaria, if you skipped Stormvale and went to Raya Lucaria, uh, you know, you could potentially come back here around level 60, I guess. And this host here, uh, it looks like, um, I don't, you know, I'm, I try not to make, like, generalizations about my opponents or whatever, but it kind of seems like maybe he's being carried a little bit, uh, so maybe this is... Or maybe maybe he was aware, maybe he was making a build that um, needed to visit Raya Lucaria or Kaled before it came to Stormvale. You know, I do that sometimes. Um, you know, if, I, if I'm going to make a build and there's a weapon I can get a hold of pretty quick if I skip Stormvale and do something else first, uh, if it will hurry my build along, I absolutely do that. So maybe that's the case. I, I just say maybe he's getting carried... Because uh, his phantoms here are uh, pretty strong. Um, not necessarily dishonest, but, but pretty strong, you know. Regardless, though, I wish um, I wish more people did Stormvale at different level ranges. I love invading Stormvale Castle. But uh, it, it seems like the only time you really get invasions here is, like, you know, level 20 or level 30. And... Uh, I just would like to be able to invade Stormvale with a more complete build, you know? Um, I, I like invading at level uh, 40. It's fun. But, you know, sometimes you want cooler builds that you can't necessarily pull off at level 40. And you can't invade Stormvale with most of those builds. You, you can occasionally get, like, some new game plus Stormvale. Um around 125 to 200 basically anywhere like that um, when you start talking like new game plus level ranges but it's still not common and uh, and that's a shame oh yeah another reason I included this video or this invasion in the video is because I talked about using the sham shear uh, in that last video that used this build and I didn't have any invasions that showed it off. And I also talked about using Sword Dance on the Shamshire. And so, yeah, here you go. Sword Dance on the Shamshire. Uh, the thing about the Shamshire... Uh, I'm sorry. The thing about Sword Dance is they nerfed all of the Ashes of War's poise damage. And Sword Dance really felt that uh, on straight swords, curved swords, katanas, whatever. Um, because that first hit doesn't break poise as good as it used to uh, because of the nerf. Um, continuing on in our random stuff video, this is my level 60 invader. 
This is not uh, any, there's no like cohesive thought behind this build other than it's built to invade. Um, you see we've got Night Maiden's Mist there, but we don't have the intelligence to cast it. We can just throw on the Stargazer Heirloom. Now we can cast Night Maiden's Mist. Uh, so this build can do a lot of different stuff that's all good in invasions. Um, but if a, a, a strange thing happens, when I play an invader build, you know, when I started doing invasions in Dark Souls 3, like seriously invading, um, where I was spending like all this time invading, when you start off, you're using like your best build, you know, what's the best build you can make um, for invasions, and you invade with that for a while. And then after you invade with that for a while, I haven't played this build in a while, so my talisman swaps and weapon swaps are taking me like way too long to pull off. But uh, yeah, sorry. I digress. Um, when you make that build, you know, you're you're trying to sort of like navigate uh, the world of invasions and how difficult uh, it is at first. So. That, that's like the build that I used in Dark Souls 3 was just like a good invader build. A build that worked well in invasions. And it, you know, there was no like thematic, you know, thought behind it really. Uh, just doing, just doing invasions with this build. And so this is kind of like that. Um, I, I make this build at different levels. I've got it at level 60, which is where this is at. I've got it at level like 125, uh, or I think maybe it's like 133, but you know, that range. And then I think I've got it at, um, I know for sure I have one at level 200. And I think maybe uh, there's another one in between there somewhere. And yeah, basically, I, I kind of have this build at level 80. But it's not meant to be mean, it just is. I, I have a build that uses the Spear Talisman and a lot of weapons with thrust damage on them, or pierce damage on them. And, uh... That... isn't necessarily trying to be a mean build, but, like, it ends up being a mean build. But that was basically, like... I had a build that was like that in Dark Souls 3, so I just thought it would be cool to remake it in Elden Ring. It's just a much better build in Elden Ring. Um, but the the double backstab, so nice. A, a strange thing happens when I use this build, or any build like this, uh, where the build is just like good, you know? I, I get in these situations and I'm like, man, I can just, I can just fight these two guys. I can just fight these three guys. I can just fight, you know, whatever. Um, your your average opponent is not prepared for an invader who has like an understanding of the game and knowledge of the game and stuff. Like they they this guy, look at him. Like he's using L1 feints and stuff like that. And like that's nice, but like. That, that's obviously like a PvP thing. There's no reason to do that in PvE. That's obviously like PvP behavior. And, um... But it's just not... You know... It's just not... Like, that's... There's so much more to be doing. Like... It, this, it annoys me, actually. When I see... When I invade people at like these weird random levels and they're doing like... PvP behavior, like I, I don't know why. I'm not saying it's right. I'm I'm wrong for this, okay? But it annoys me when I see people eat crab or shrimp <laughs> because it just it's such PvP behavior in my head, um, you know. And and what really annoys me about it is like I'll hit somebody with like a full blown cast of uh you know gavel of Hyma. And then they eat shrimp. It's like, brother, I'm not doing physical damage. <laughs> it's the same thing with like those L1 feints and stuff like that. Um, like, I, I know you're you're trying, but like you're trying all the wrong things. Like, 
there's more important things to learn than like eat shrimp and L1 faint. You know, like there's. But my point is, my point is, is on a lot of my builds that are more like you know, uh, thought out, thematic, uh, lore appropriate, whatever. On any of those builds, it that stuff annoys me. And when I play with this build, it's like it doesn't matter. Just all that stuff is kind of cute at that point. Um, you know, like, and so I I end up I end up noticing, I guess, like the the difference in um, familiarity in PvP between myself and my opponent. So I see my opponent doing all this stuff, and I'm like, it, it really is like a world of difference between like what my opponent is is knowledgeable of and what I am knowledgeable of. And then I just end up kind of being like, oh, these poor guys, <laughs> these poor babies, they're trying, they're trying their hardest, and I appreciate that. And so then I end up being nice, uh, you know. Despite the fact that, like, this Radon is absolutely being carried through by his weird fat-rolling Rivers of Blood friend. Um, and, I, I don't know, like, if I was playing on one of my, like, nicer builds, quote-unquote, one of, one of my builds where I'm, like, actually trying to, like, you know, make a uh, concentrated effort. To, to make like a, a cool thought out build this would this would drive me mad and again I'm not saying my thought process is pure or is good or that it's right even I'm just explaining it okay in the moment um, I feel these things I'm like look at this guy he's getting carried through the game by this over leveled moon veil or I'm sorry uh, rivers of blood guy okay but when I do it now, it's like, it's like he's fat rolling though. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it, I, I end up, I end up being able to like take pity <laughs> on, on my opponents. I, I, I know if you're listening to this, you might be like, this doesn't make sense. Your thought process doesn't make sense. It's not logical. Okay? And you're right. I, 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 I can't stress that enough. I, I know that. I know. It's just the way I feel in the moment. And then in the moment here, like, all I'm thinking about is like, okay, like, no, no matter what, nothing ever makes me not feel like... Like, I have to defeat all phantoms. <laughs> like that... So, in the moment, I'm just worried about that but after this phantom is gone immediate pity immediate pity for this host <laughs> also um I, I know i sound congested uh it's because i am and uh it's just that time of year for people like myself who have to deal with allergies and the pollen trees decide uh you know oh it's it's warm enough today for pollen and then it's not the next day and then it is again and so I just get to wake up every day and I play roulette with nature and uh, yeah so sorry for the congested head sound but um, here we are listening to it regardless so homie's just running at this point and on pretty much any other build I would have been like oh yeah oh yeah now he's running because he knows he can't beat me. <laughs> but right now I'm just like, oh, this poor guy. He's going to run into all these wizards and get shot to death with magic. I wonder if he knows that there's an illusory wall right there. He probably doesn't know because his overleveled buddy didn't didn't explain that to him. <laughs> so now I've got to try and like not only uh, get his attention, but then I have to also like win him over and make him trust me enough to, to, to show him where he needs to go. And I feel like the, you know, a lot of people I know, they see people teabag and they're like, 
Oh, they're so, they're disrespecting me. Um, and the tea bag does like for old school fighting game and uh, old school FPS. You know, the the tea bag is like a that is like a you know like a rude thing. Um, the but I, I think a lot of these like younger players like teabagging is just sort of like hey what's up yeah 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 look at us you know like I don't think it has I don't think there's there's anything inherently rude about it to so I think there's like this generational divide uh, with teabagging so maybe I should have tried teabagging to like uh <laughs> But, uh, you know, then you run the risk of them misunderstanding that. So there you go. We were nice. We let him get to the next grace. And now it's like, okay, now let's fight. But here's the problem. Is after after you do this, they're like, you're my friend now. <laughs> so then so I think he wanted to fist fight. But, man, that takes forever in this game. So rather than, than fist fight, I'm just going to send him home. And uh, But we'll use the anchor. Anchor down. I think I think that's a Vanderbilt thing, and I live in Nashville. I didn't go to Vanderbilt, so I don't give a shit. But uh, I guess it's thematically there. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Later, y'all.